Almost 10 years ago, I had a doctor come and tell me that after a routine examination, they found a 13 centimeter mass in my chest. And in the hours and days after hearing this, I remember having this strange sensation of feeling both profoundly numb to the world around me, while at the same time, my mind was racing so fast, I felt like someone had cut my mental brakes. It's hard when you're in that space to feel like God is doing anything. And if God's voice is still and soft and sounds like sheer silence, how am I supposed to hear God in moments like that? With the help of doctors and friends and family, I was able to endure surgery and find physical healing. And on the other side of surgery, that feeling of panic numbness began to recede. But then a little over three years ago, I began a battle with a chronic medical condition that made me incredibly dizzy and foggy and fatigued almost all the time. In the initial days after my condition began, the subsequent confusion and panic brought back that feeling of 100 mile per hour numbness. But as my condition persisted and answers and treatment weren't coming, that feeling changed. Panic and numbness gave way to feelings of abandonment and loss. It was no longer a matter of not being able to hear God's voice through the mental noise. Now I felt that God had simply stopped talking to me and had moved on. Many people find the presence of God is actually heightened in times of crisis. It's the day-to-day -day life where it's incredibly hard to see God being active in this world. A little over a decade ago, some researchers looking at the spiritual lives of American teenagers coined a term to describe an understanding of God many of us live with. It's called moralistic therapeutic deism. It basically comes down to these three things. We believe God wants us to be good. We believe God wants us to be happy. And we believe that God is far away watching. You see, belief in the existence of God is still incredibly high in our society. Something like 89% still believe in the existence of God to some degree or another. But what's really challenging is believing in a God that is actually working in this world. Maybe God's work is just too slow and subtle in a world full of emails and texts and instant messages. Maybe God's work is just too modest and humble in nature. And so it's easily drowned out by the noise of constant promises of transformational products and entertainment options. Starting on Sunday, June 3rd, we begin our new six-week sermon series, looking at the ways that God is still at work in our lives and the world around us. We'll be studying the prophet Samuel along with the life of David as we hope to discover how God continues to call, to respond, to see, to lead, to save and unite. So join us for our new series, God at Work.